Psygnosis has released the PlayStation game Destruction Derby for the PC, and what a surprise it is. In this market crowded with all kinds of racing games, it's really nice to find a game that rises out of the pack and distinguishes itself. If that's a way to say that this is one honking great way to smash cars into each other at high speeds, watching them crumble into crushed shells of rolling destruction as bits and pieces of chassis go flying all over the screen, then you're right! As you might be able to tell, <laughs> this game seems to have a strange effect on people, particularly males, whenever it's getting played. It's a strange sight indeed to see a crowd of guys that, gather buddy. around the monitor and start grunting and scratching themselves as the cars smash into each run. other and careen into the walls. <laughs> Whatever the reason behind this phenomenon, Destruction Derby seems to have the ability to unlock that side of us that tries to find the answer to the immovable object irresistible force paradox. Destruction Derby is more than just one game. It's actually several different games involving cars, high speeds, and lots of destruction. The game that is undoubtedly the most fun is the Destruction Derby itself. Set in an arena called The Bowl, all of the cars start on the edge of a round, flat, open arena and try to beat the living hell out of each other. Strangely enough, the object isn't to cause the most hurt, but to spin the other cars. When you spin a car 90 degrees, you get two points. 180 spins get four points, and causing some hapless driver to go a full 360 nets you a whopping 10 points. Of course, this isn't as easy as it may sound, and you'll take a pounding as often as you give it. The more damage a car takes, the worse the body looks. It's all accompanied by billowing smoke. A diagram in the lower right of the screen keeps track of your car's damage through the color of arrows pointing at strategic parts of the car. At full strength, the arrows are green. But as damage is taken, the colors progress towards red. But it's the two arrows at the front of the car which show the condition of your engine that affect when your car is dead. When those arrows go, regardless of what shape the rest of your car is in, your car is dead. When you take an especially good series of hits to certain parts of your car, you'll notice various things happen to your performance. You might start pulling to the left or the right, or even worse, lose most of your ability to steer at all. This makes running into a wall more of a threat than being nailed by an opponent. You're really in trouble if you lose power in your engine. Your car will slow to a crawl, at which point you might as well paint a big bullseye on your car. The only trouble with this is that the cars slow down a little too much. If it's just you and one or two other cars driving around at a crawl, it can take forever to crash into each other, and even longer to knock the other guy out of the game. When you get to that point, there is more excitement in watching a tree grow. But when you get tired of crunching cars in the bowl, there are other different modes to play in, like the Wreck and Racing mode. Basically, this is Destruction Derby on a racetrack. Instead of being in the bowl, you're now on a racetrack with all of the same scoring methods in effect. But now you get 10 points for finishing first. It can be very difficult to spin an opponent's car in order to gain points when you're going in the same direction so the designers have thrown in some interesting sections of tracks to help things out a little. What they've done is built in intersecting areas of tracks called crossovers. This is where the traffic goes across the same part of the track at 90 degree angles. The result is that you catch or are caught by other cars at just the right angle for maximum rotation. It's a crapshoot when you go through these crossovers on whether or not there's another car crossing through, but some of the pileups and crashes are very impressive. When you're racing around these tracks, you might get tired of trying to crush the opposition, so Destruction Derby has a mode simply called Stock Car Racing. This gives zero points for spinning other cars and lets you concentrate on winning the race. The object is to just get around the track before anyone else. What's surprising is that this is just part of a bigger game, and it's just about as good as any of the other arcade racing games out there that concentrate just on simple racing. You can even compete in time trials, which is racing on the same tracks except no one else is racing against you. It's just you racing against the clock. When you compete in championship seasons, you're put into a division, and as you move into the next higher division, you gain access to new tracks and different cars. As you can see, the graphics are really great. What's even better is that this is only in VGA, meaning slower systems shouldn't have much trouble running the game smoothly. But these are some of the sharpest VGA graphics around. You can really tell when a car is getting the snot crunched out of it, and the background graphics are equally impressive. The mountains, cityscapes, balloons floating around, it's all here and looking really sharp. One drawback is that while the graphics are nice, you're kind of limited to what you can see. The camera smoothly scrolls from the front to the back of the car depending on which direction you're going in, but there's no way to see to the sides. Which gives the computer an unfair advantage and can be a little frustrating at times. 
It would have been great to be able to look left, right, and behind while driving around, but it's not to be. One real problem with the game is that it doesn't support a steering wheel peripheral, which would have been a very welcome part of the game. You can use the keyboard, an analog joystick, a digital joystick, or the mouse but a steering wheel was suspiciously absent. Normally, a game will recognize a steering wheel as a joystick, but not here. It would really have helped gameplay. The keyboard, though, works surprisingly well, and the joysticks work just fine. Mouse control is as good as your mouse is, but doggone it, if it's a racing game, I at least want to be able to use this $100 peripheral. There's lots of other little features, like the replay mode, where you can make your own film of the race through a wide variety of camera angles. You can also race against other humans through either linked computers or league play, where everyone competes individually. There are a lot of options in this game, which has a surprising amount of depth to it. At first glance, it may just seem like a novelty game, but Destruction Derby is really one of the better racing games available right now. For pure fun, Destruction Derby can't be beat. It's got great graphics, great gameplay, and the collisions are the most satisfying destruction you'll inflict on your PC. 